This video is brought to you by Midway USA. Support the channel by choosing Midway for your shooting and outdoor supplies. Welcome to Nine Hole Reviews. In today's video, we explore a nuanced and frequently debated subject within the realm of low power variable optics. Should you be selecting a first focal plane or a second focal plane rig? First, we'll provide some brief explanations on what these two terms, commonly referred to or at least written as FFP and SFP respectively, actually mean in context of an optic. We'll discuss the pros and cons of both options, and ultimately provide our opinions and guidelines when we're selecting an optic for our rifles. So let's identify what is meant by the designations of first focal plane and second focal plane for those who might not be familiar with the terms. A first focal plane optic has the reticle built in front of the magnification lens, whereas a second focal plane optic has the reticle built behind the magnification lens. Now, that doesn't actually clear up anything without also understanding the result of the reticle's position. Specifically, that a reticle in front of the lens will grow and shrink as magnification is adjusted, whereas a reticle behind the lens will remain one size always, even when magnification is changed. So, first focal plane, reticle changes size with magnification. Second focal plane, reticle is always the same size. Now, Let's talk pros and cons. We'll start first with the first focal plane. The most significant advantage of the first focal plane style optic is that as the reticle changes in size, any bullet drop compensation, reticle subtensions, mill grids, or otherwise hold points within the optic will remain true to their actual measure. Practically speaking, this means your hold points are still exactly the same for various distances of engagement on various power levels throughout the optic. Say for example, you're using a Vortex Razor Gen 3 at six power. Your mill grid is still just as accurate and usable as it is at 10 power. The whole reticle, the target, and the full image looking through the tube just looks a bit smaller. An additional value add for first focal plane optics is that because the reticle changes size and is very small at one power, the reticle can include additional details, such as subtensions, hold points, mill grids, and the like, without cluttering the image on low to mid power. Imagine if the reticle you're looking at here on the primary arms PLX was the same size in the optic on one power as it is here at eight. The mill grid and the horseshoe would cover huge areas of the image and render the optic you know, effectively unusable at one power. So because the reticle will shrink as we dial down, we can afford to have more intricate reticles up at higher power than on second focal plane optics. But this advantage does not come without some drawbacks. Because the reticle on first focal plane optics shrinks down while on one power, unless the reticle is extremely well designed, it can be harder to track while mounting the rifle, tracking through recoil, or executing target transitions and the like. Some optics and reticles manage this better than others, but it's not generally a problem that second focal plane reticles have to deal with, since they can be constructed to sit at the perfect medium between low end and top end use for the given optics power range. What we've observed is that most first focal plane reticles that feel good at one power tend to feel very chunky and imprecise at max power. Lastly, a dig against FFPs generally comes down to economics. First focal plane optics are generally more expensive than their second focal plane counterparts. Now, as you can imagine, second focal plane optics 
basically flip the script in terms of pros and cons. The reticle is only accurate at max magnification, the center aiming point will be consistent across the full power range, but the subtensions, BDC or other hold points will not. And as a result, second focal plane reticles generally don't include the same level of subtensions or grids, which limit the use of the reticle at distance. On the flip side, second focal plane reticles are usually a bit faster up close, as previously mentioned, since the reticle doesn't have to worry about shrinking. So, if you're more concerned with close range, you pick a second focal plane, and if you're more concerned with long range, you pick a first focal plane, right? <laughs> well, not exactly. While that's been our experience most of the time, if we take a look at an optic like the Trijicon 1 to 8 AccuPower, the reticle is actually biased towards one power in our opinion. It's a first focal plane rig that's actually a decent option if you're trying to keep the power between one and four or five max most of the time. So how the heck do you make the determination then on this? Well, the rule of thumb that's worked for us is to consider how frequently you believe you'd want the optic at less than maximum magnification and also then need to use the optic at range at the same time. If the answer to this is more than almost never, we'd strongly recommend a first focal plane optic. Easy example in case we've lost you. You're using a 6 to 30 Hubble telescope on your rifle. Are you only ever going to be using it at 30 power when you need to make use of the ranging features or holdover points and so on? Absolutely not. In fact, you're more likely than not going to run the optic on 10 to 15 power the majority of the time you're shooting it. So you'd need the reticle to scale appropriately for those mid power settings and therefore you'd need a first focal plane optic. This gets a bit harder to answer when the top end magnification of the optic you're using is only six or eight power though. If you're shooting at say 200 and in, you don't need holdovers to be accurate since your projectile will still be flat enough to effectively hold point of aim, point of impact. So where you might be cranked up to 1.75 power to engage some 50 or 100 meter targets from a barricade, this is of no consequence. And consider also that if you know a torso sized target's distance from you, you can effectively aim with the center of the reticle using a chest head hat method out to as far as 400 or so without needing any sort of bullet drop points or mill grid. So you could be on four power out of eight power in your optic and still be fine to 400 plus or minus using these aiming techniques. So what's the end result with all this? Well, in our opinion, on one to four power optics, we're confident in saying we'll basically always be cranked to four power if we're doing anything at distance. On a one to six power, in a position where we would need to use holdovers in the reticle, we'd be using six power almost all the time. But on a one to eight power, there are certainly circumstances, especially depending on what we plan to do with the rifle and optic we've configured, where we might be running at say five to six power and actually need to range a target or take a shot using a BDC or mill grid. Now, that's probably a more, let's call it a real world application than say something you might experience in a tactical rifle match, for example. In the rifle match with known targets and locations, I'm probably still maxing out at eight power all the time. Now on the one to 10 power optics, there's a significant period of time, even in the competition space, where I might want to take advantage of a more generous eye box, for example, as opposed to using the extra two power of additional magnification to carry me from eight to 10, while I engage at 500 to 600 meter max distance torso targets. As you can see, this is a subjective question and answer, but our general guidelines are as follows. Anything from one to six power is probably fine to run as a second focal plane optic. One to 10 power optics or optics with even higher end magnification outside the LPVO range would almost always make more sense as a first focal plane setup. It's the one to eight power optics that sit in this unique middle ground where the end user's intent probably plays a fairly large role in answering this question. If you're planning on shooting, say three gun, 
second focal plane is probably gonna be fine. But many other applications might prefer the versatility of a first focal plane setup in the one to eight range. So there you have it. We hope if nothing else, this presented you a different means by which you might consider first focal versus second focal plane optics when you're outfitting your next rifle. And with that said, until next time, we'll see you on the range. Seven one six is Bill Knight six four six eight pack red con one green to green top copy over. Bill Knight six this is seven one six Roger over. One six Bill Knight one one pack.